is being offered from Tadoussac to Lille Rouge in the middle of the river. Into our flotation suits for this whale watching trip. In a fast zodiac, it's a 20 minute ride to the island. The day was foggy and the water rough. Lille Rouge appeared through the mist. Unloading our gear, we knew the whale watching would have to wait until the morning. Government ferries operating from the mainland to island communities are free. This is the ferry service from Saint Joseph to Ilocudre. It runs every day, year round. We're leaving a community of 200 people to join an island population of 1,000. I hope we can stand the crowds. With splendid views of the St. Lawrence River, this is one of the best ferry rides in Quebec. It's a 15 minute trip covering 3.7 kilometers. Government ferries can accommodate 400 passengers and 50 to 60 vehicles. For many visitors to the island, this is a popular day trip. Like the cars, bikers roll on and off the ferry, and there's a super day ahead. You can rent a bicycle at Velo Coudre. There's pickup service at the ferry. The cyclist map of the island is excellent. All types of pedal power are available. So this is the Tour de Charlevoix. Jacques Cartier, that tourist from Saint-Malo, France, was the first European to explore the St. Lawrence River. He landed here to discover hundreds and hundreds of hazel trees. So he named the island Ile aux Coudres, Hazel Island. Now the road around the island is 26 kilometers long. A road that cries out, see it on a bike. The solitary windmill was built in 1836 and is part of the island's Econo Museum of Flour. The site is unique in Quebec. As in yesteryear, the miller makes flour from wheat and buckwheat ground on authentic millstones. The flour is for sale. From the earliest days, islanders had to be self-sufficient, making their own clothes and linen. On this site, you'll get a sense of the pioneer spirit. Another interesting discovery, a proud farmhouse over 200 years old. So this guy's a world traveler? St. Louis Church, one of the most beautiful in Quebec. It was built in 1885, replacing an earlier chapel on the site. The church is a replica of the first basilica at St. Anne de Beaupre. Islanders became excellent boat builders and navigators. Les Voitures d'eau, the boat museum, tells the story of navigation on the St. Lawrence River and how life was rough and demanding for those pioneers living on Ilo Coudre. From a three-story tower, there are commanding views of this lovely, tranquil island and the shores beyond. Plan to spend a night here. Following a short rest, this is the Pedno Orchards. There are daily cider tastings. They make apple jelly, butter, and syrup. All with that down-home island goodness. The two most famous hotels in the region are the Manoir Richelieu and the Hotel Tadoussac. Part of the joy of a holiday here is staying in small family-run inns and B&Bs, like the Auberge Beau Sejour. It opened in 1911. It's run today by the Tremblay family. Auberge Beau Sejour in Saint Joseph de la Rive is a cozy 19 room hotel. Offering three meals a day, the regional menu is simple and original. The small, comfortable inn has a saltwater pool and a tennis court. You'll feel at home here. On Ilo Coudre, the 90 room La Roche Perreuse is part of the island's heritage. Built in 1930, the hotel has an excellent dining room and two bars. There are ongoing thematic shows in the evenings. On site, bicycles are for rent. There's tennis and a heated saltwater pool. 
Coming up next, music in the mountains, a great hotel by the river, and historic Pointel Pick. Coming up next, in the St. Lawrence Ilocudra, touring by bicycle. And where to stay, a few choices in Charlevoix. Between the St. Lawrence River and the Laurentian Mountains, Le Domaine Forget is a very important center of music and dance and home to Charlevoix's International Music Festival. These historic grounds are open to the public. You can stroll here at your leisure. Amid the beauty of the landscape, the views, and the music, everything is in perfect harmony. In this bucolic setting in Charlevoix, promising students from Quebec, elsewhere in Canada, and around the world come each summer to study under the best music professors. As you stroll the grounds, drop in on a class. The Domaine Forgette Music and Dance Academy is a delightful treasure in this region. Check the events calendar for activities in the 600-seat concert hall. I was 12 years old when I last stayed at the Manoir on the cliff overlooking the St. Lawrence River. It is one of the country's truly grand hotels. Le Manoir Richelieu was built in 1899. The cream of society met here. After a $100 million renovation program, old world luxury has returned to this wonderful French chateau. On a cliff in the heart of Charlevoix, the Manoir has a storybook setting. Following a fire in 1928, the hotel was rebuilt as a French castle. The latest renovation period has restored the famous landmark to its former elegance. From the hotel's rooms and the terrace below, there are spectacular views of the St. Lawrence River and its ever-changing scene. The new mezzanine level is grand with its dark oak and maritime-inspired furniture. The feel of the old manoir is not too distant. Archival photographs hang throughout the hotel. New luxurious surroundings for a new century of welcoming travelers. The manoir Richelieu has all season pools. On the tee, I joined club pro Norman Doyle, who showed the way. Charlevoix is an excellent golfing destination. The Manoir Richelieu Golf Club is one of Canada's best golf resorts. This course opened way back in 1925. There are dramatic changes in the elevation here, so a cart is mandatory. Great views of the St. Lawrence River. I'm lying two up here. Norman the pro, he's... He's lying eight. <laughs> the 18-hole course over 5,865 yards is a par 71 layout sitting high above the river. Norman runs an excellent full-service clubhouse. Celebrate all those birdies overlooking the St. Lawrence. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, I prepared for high stakes in the casino. First, an introduction to all the gaming choices. Okay, my budget is 375. The Casino de Charlevoix has 21 gaming tables and 800 slot machines. Admission is restricted to patrons 18 years and over. Yes, I held on to my 375. If the Canadian travel industry has a birthplace, it is La Melbay Point au Pic. Long before jet travel made Europe more accessible to North Americans, Charlevoix was a popular destination for wealthy Americans and Canadians. When he was president, William Taft had a home here, and those grand steamships brought hundreds of visitors every summer. It was the region's belle époque. The waterfront town of Pointe-au-Pic has been revitalized. The old buildings are multicolored. 
a scenic railway leads to the casino and the Manoir Richelieu on a cliff above the town. Samuel de Champlain, the founder of French Canada, named La Malbaie. He spent a night here in 1608. When he went to sail away in the morning, he couldn't. The bay was dry at low tide. He said, what a sick bay. La Mal Bay. You know, like Mal de Mer. The homes of the well-heeled residents of 75 years ago still line Chemin des Falaises. Some are private estates, others have become charming inns. You don't have to be wealthy to sleep here. Coming up next, a cruise on the Saguenay Fjord, whale watching at Tadoussac, and overnight on historic Ville Rouge. Direct. For a small community, it packs a lot of romantic history. Here at the confluence of the St. Lawrence and Saguenay Rivers, Tadoussac was the first fur trading post in Canada. Today, it's a popular destination for adventure tourism, where the whales are the five-star attraction. The Hotel Tadoussac is a good base for water adventures. Our first excursion was on the schooner Marie Clarisse, built in 1922 in Nova Scotia. There are two cruises out of Tadoussac you should take, the whale watching, of course, and this exploration of the Saguenay Fjord. It's a three-hour cruise on one of Quebec's best-known waterways. Something I've always wanted to do. The topography is rugged as our cruise takes us by sheer cliffs, coves, bays, and headlands. Even in summer, you may need a jacket or a sweater. We're doing exactly what ships have been doing for a hundred years now on the Saguenay River and the St. Lawrence River. You know the Canada Steamship Line? Huge, beautiful white ships. They had this travel tour, like we're doing every day, every week. We're on the Saguenay River, magnificent Saguenay River, the fjord of the Saguenay. The Saguenay Fjord Discovery Cruise is a highlight on a vacation in Charlevoix, a region designated by UNESCO in 1989 as a World Biosphere Reserve. In Tadoussac, before you set out whale watching, visit the Marine Mammal Interpretation Center. The exhibits are informative and entertaining as you learn about the fascinating and mysterious world of the whales of the St. Lawrence River. The center's film is a must-see. The St. Lawrence Marine Park, just east of Tadoussac, gives you an opportunity to watch for whales from huge rocks that run down to the edge of the river. It wasn't long before we made our first sighting, a minke whale. Other species in the estuary include the finback, beluga, and the blue whale. There are picnic tables close by, and you can rent binoculars at the reception center. Many visitors spend hours on the rocks just watching. A new adventure is being offered from Tadoussac to Lille Rouge in the middle of the river. Into our flotation suits for this whale watching trip. In a fast zodiac, it's a 20 minute ride to the island. The day was foggy and the water rough. Lille Rouge appeared through the mist. Unloading our gear, we knew the whale watching would have to wait until the morning. 